Uh, good morning, uh, colleagues. Good morning, Chair. Good morning to good you. Morning. How are you. Good. How are you, Mr. Murray? I am very well, thank you. It's a busy week, but exciting. Exciting, yes, indeed. All right. Um, uh, Prime, are you on the platform? Indeed, Chair. Morning, Chair. Morning, Brian. I'm in. Mon morning. Brian, who is doing it? It's yourself or? Um, oh, I'm sorry, Chai. I, I got cut off. Uh, I'm doing it now. You're doing it now. Okay. Morning, Brian. Is it visible, Chair? Yes, it is visible. No. Uh, can you right go up to the right? Okay. <clears throat> so this is the agenda, colleagues, uh, for this meeting. Um, it's uh, one opening and welcome to apologies. Three uh, consideration and adoption of the outstanding minutes. Um, <clears throat> And, and then for a, a matter arising, a DOD report on all cases of uh, irregular expenditure, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. And then five- Recording in progress. By the DOD on uh, the findings of the military task team on the procurement of a heparin medication from Cuba by the DOD. And then we get an update uh, on the same matter uh, from SAPRA and, uh, and, and the AG's office. And then lastly, um, is the presentation uh, on the, by, by, <clears throat> on the on the on, on the work of the presidential so presidential task team on military veterans and then we close the meeting so these are the items and the <clears throat> Brian in view of the fact that um, <clears throat> we will uh, the minutes are more uh, of a, an internal uh, matter I would suggest that we take them to the end. I understand why you are bringing them up front, uh, so that we don't forget them. Uh, so that uh, we quickly move to item number four immediately after apologies and yeah, uh, and then run with the rest and then later come back to the minutes. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I get these uh, colleagues, they agree with me on that one. Correct, right. Correct. Thank you so much, colleagues. And uh, it doesn't look like there is any objection. Thank you very much for support, Mr. Murray. Right, uh, Brian, uh, do you have the quorum? Indeed, we do. Sir. We do. Do you have all the agencies that were invited to come and uh, make a presentation today? That is correct. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> Let's note the apologies, Brian, um, starting with the portfolio committee members. Uh, we have from uh, Honorable uh, General uh, Wolomisa, who was unable to attend uh, the meeting chair. All right. We okay. also have from uh, Minister, as well as the SECDEF, uh, <laughs> who are on a, a, a state visit uh, uh, to West African region with the president. Okay, no, no. So let's let's record uh, the apology of uh, 
uh, General Olomisa and, and uh, <clears throat> for, on the committee side, and then the minister and the executive on, on the part of the department. Uh, any other apologies, co colleagues, that we may not be aware of? All right. Uh, uh, Chairperson, just, just I, um, my colleague, um, the alternative member, um, um, Honorable um, Thomas Walters, apologies, please. Okay, no, we'll not, uh, the apology of, uh, of, of Mr. Walters. All right, colleagues, thank, thank you very much. Um, uh, we can then move to the, the next item. Uh, so it's the presentation by the department um, on the uh, work of the uh, task team. Brian, we received a, a letter from the, the, the ministry uh, on the issue. Uh, yes. I'm, 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 I'm looking for it now. Uh, um, I'll just quickly go through, look at the letter now. It's a letter from, <clears throat> yes, from the ministry, from the ministry. It reads, it reads, uh, it's dated the 29th of November, I received uh, yesterday. It's addressed to the chairman, to the chairperson um, <clears throat> of the Portfolio Committee on Defense. Um, the, okay, the Department of Defense presentation to the Portfolio Committee on Defense and Military Veterans on the findings of the military task team uh, in the procurement of heparin medication from Cuba by the Department of Defense. The letter bears reference to the above uh, matter. By direction of uh, Honorable uh, T.R. Mutis, MP Minister of Defense and Military Veterans, can be informed that the above mentioned presentation, which the ministerial task team is expected to brief the Committee on Defense and Military Veterans on the 1st of December, 2021, is still yet to be presented to the internal structures due to its sensitive, sensitive nature and due to the absence of the Honorable Minister and the Secretary for Defense, as they are currently attending the state visits to the West African region with uh, His Excellency President, um, the President, from the 30th November to the 5th uh, December. We therefore request that the matter be deferred to later possibly early in the 2022 Portfolio Committee program. Yours sincerely, Mr. T. E. Motumi, Special Advisor to the Minister of Defense and Military Veterans. Okay. So this is the, the, the letter we received from the department uh, in relation to the matter that they were to, going to present uh, on uh, uh, this morning. Right, <clears throat> colleagues, uh, so this is the situation. I, I thought I should bring this matter up here because uh, the committee determines, uh, determines the, the agenda and, and, and then informs, and thereafter informs the all concerns uh, accordingly. So now if there is to be any change to the agenda, the matter must be placed on, on record. Uh, right, colleagues. Um, but we, we do have um, uh, Sabra and um, who were asked to present on their uh, role as mandated uh, by the legislation. And um, we also do have a presentation on the same matter 
on the role of uh, the AG as, uh, as mandated by the, 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 their own legislation, empowering yes. legislation. So those two are not affected uh, by the letter of the, of the minister, all what the minister is asking is that her presentation uh, be stood down until later uh, or early next year. All right, Mr. Mare, your hand is up. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, yes, like this is a disappointing, um, uh, you know, turn of events. Chairperson, um, first of all, um, can we can that letter be distributed to us the, as members of the committee, please? And then, secondly, that is a letter from the advisor of the minister, if I if I heard you correctly. Um, and I think it's totally unacceptable that an advisor to the minister is is communicating with to us. That's just totally unacceptable. It it is it is unprocedural. It is um, just totally totally wrong um, and I mean I hope the minister is, is, is not following you know this kind of route to, to communicate with us via an advisor. We've already had last year and earlier this year you remember the whole situation with General Yum calling us not their clients. Um, we cannot have a situation that where we have communicated well in advance about our agenda and the deadlines that has been set and the commitments have been made by the minister that, that, you know, today is the day that we need to get the feedback and the reports. In the day where we are living in that, I mean, all of us are on Zoom, surely the minister and the SecDef, wherever they are in the world, could have turned into and, and be, be, be present at the Zoom meeting. There's just no excuse. It is not an in-person uh, meeting. Um, and, and, and I am worried why they are doing that. Um, I mean, this is serious business. It is, it, if, you, if you look at the reports that we have received, it is, it is, it is serious transgressions and, and allegations that have been made. And by them trying to defer and delay this process until they even mention next year. I mean, that's just unheard of. It's just totally unacceptable. And I absolutely take, take offense to that. And I, I will not support that. And my request to you is to, is to um, first of all, distribute that letter to us, but then write back to the minister um, in a very cordial, very professional way, but telling her, you know, we are serious about our business. Uh, and we have uh, programmed this. We have made our time available. And that is the least that we expect from her and the SecDef to be present in a meeting like this. She has made commitments and she is now not honoring that commitment. And, and I, I really am enormously disappointed. Um, and they, it seems like they're playing with our time and our emotions and, our, and the facts on the table. Um, it, it just seems like, you know, um, charges must just proceed against everybody that, is, that has got a role to play here. And I hope that the, the minister will set this record straight very, very quickly before the end of this term, before this end of this year. Thank you very much, Chair. Sorry, apologies, uh, Mr. Mare. Uh, I should add that the minister called me yesterday to confirm uh, the communication. Um, thanks. Mr. Maliake. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. I just want, I mean, uh, to concur with what has been raised by Honorable uh, Marais with regard, I mean, uh, to the nature of, I mean, uh, the report to the committee that, I mean, uh, from the advisory of the minister, we are getting that response. But uh, Chairperson, uh, what I'm trying to see here, the, 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 the reason to delay or to defer, I mean, uh, this matter, I think uh, they are raising, I mean, uh, two issues there. Is that, I mean, the minister is not, I mean, uh, in the country or is not available to, in, for today's meeting. And also they are saying, uh, because uh, of uh, the nature of sens sensitivity of, of that, I mean, uh, letter, 
and also they are talking about, I mean, uh, to be first, I mean, discuss or engage the internal structures. Now I'm trying to find out exactly what, I mean, is the main reason, uh, because if it's about the internal structures, what are those structures we're talking about internally? And then um, also, I mean, uh, to tell us, I mean, right now to say, I mean, uh, the minister is cannot, I mean, afford to deal with that matter. And also of the, the what I mean been raised by uh, Honorable Murray, that I mean uh, there is no date, uh, I mean uh, for that matter to be dealt to be dealt with. But what we are hearing is that um, let it uh, be deferred. I mean uh, until next year. I think uh, Chairperson, to be honest, um, it, it, it's 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 very very unfair for us. I mean uh, to get I mean uh, such I mean uh, a notice while I mean members are here, I mean, uh, to deal with the issue. I think uh, uh, also, I mean, uh, concur or uh, I mean, support Mr. Marais to say, let I mean that letter from the advisory office be circulated to the members so that at least we know what is happening. And uh, from now onwards, whether we will be receiving, I mean, letters from the advisory or we will be, I mean, getting it directly from uh, the minister. Uh, they, but it's very, very disturbing, Chairperson. No matter what, it's very, very disturbing. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, Brian, may you uh, circulate the, the letter um, so that colleagues uh, have it in, in print in black and white? Mr. Mufanya, I see your hand, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Chair and, and colleagues. Mine is just to register the same sentiments as Mr. Shalembe and Mr. Mare, that I concur with everything that has been mentioned by them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. All right. Um, I guess that takes us, um, I think that concludes the, the responses or reaction to the, the letter. Uh, I don't know if the the deputy minister is in the meeting. Um, is the deputy minister in the meeting? Yes, sir. I see. I see the deputy minister. Yes, uh, chair. Good morning and uh, morning to honourable honourable members. Okay, minister. I don't know if you want to comment uh, before we. Close the the, the 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 item. Well, this is not an item. From my side, chair, no comment uh, because uh, the matters you are discussing, I was not in the loop about, and uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, I'm unable to to assist. Uh, I I think uh, the the committee. Uh, should uh, you know decide how it uh, consider it it consider is it considers it best to move forward i think uh, the submission by the minister uh, is um, it's it's a very you know unfortunate uh, uh, objective uh, impediment i know the minister uh, is very much uh, uh, keen and uh, interested to get these matters that are on the agenda, you know, dealt with, uh, you know, uh, thoroughly. Um, and it's just unfortunate that uh, it coincided with her travel out of the country. Uh, but um, I know that meetings of the committee uh, uh, are at times, you know, convened even outside of uh, the schedule. Of, uh, of parliament when necessary. Um, I'm just raising it uh, in the context of the sentiment of committee members that uh, the, the matters are, are urgent and are important to be, you know, put paid to. And that's all I can say, thank you. Okay. No, no, th thank you very much. You, you are right at the end that uh, it does not have to be early in the new year, if we can find a slot um, before the end of the year. Um, Kamete is in the meeting. Um, when is the minister likely to, to uh, be back? 
and when he's in the country and he's not going away again. Uh, Ms. Kamete. Ms. Kamete. Sorry, Dr. Kamete. Dr. Kamete is probably wait, waited for you to address her as doctor. But I see that she is on the on the platform. Then it means that there is a, a problem. Uh, good, 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 good morning, Chair. I, I couldn't hear you. Uh, good morning, members, honorable members. Yes, good morning. Were you, were you following, yeah, yeah. following the discussions? No, Chair, I was uh, kicked out. I couldn't hear you. If the Chair can just repeat what they want me to respond to. All right. I, I, I only have one question. Whether wh When is the minister likely to be... Uh, when, is the, when is she back in the country and... We're trying to reschedule the meeting so that we can have it sometime before the end of the year. But obviously, in, in the period that uh, the, in the, the minister is in the country and has been able to, uh, to uh, consult or to take the report through the internal structures. Um, Chair, thank you. I think uh, the minister will be able to answer that. I don't have information about where she's likely to be back, but the SECDEF is back on the 8th of December. The SECDEF is back on the 8th of December. Yes. So I'm um, right. until the 8th. All right. Okay. So, yes, uh, I might just check who's that, Mr. Shalemba? It, it's Brian Chair. Uh, Chair, I just wanted to, to advise uh, the letter that the minister sent had indicated that the minister comes back from the, from the West Africa visits on the 5th, but then is leaving again from the 6th to the 9th. She will be at the UN. Uh, uh, hence, she's, I, I, should, I should then uh, expect that she's only back after the 9th when she'll conclude the UN. Okay. No, Chairperson, Chairperson yes, my, my request is, um, obviously the, these are not in-person meetings. Um, and, and the minister can be in America, she can be in West Africa, she can be at home, she can be at the office, she can be anywhere for us to have this meeting. So, so my request is that within that period, even if we must sit in the evening, uh, while she's at the UN during the day, or even at night when she has finished with her work at the, at the UN during the day. I mean, all of us are prepared to, to make time available because I think all of us agree that this is a very, very, very critical and very important time. Um, the record speaks for itself for this committee of what we have done and how we have considered it. Um, so, so we cannot, you know, go... Uh, in Christmas without dealing with this matter decisively with the minister. And, and I think there's no doubt that we can do it. We have done it in the past. You remember be, uh, with Prosper, where we have sat in the evening late uh, and, and, and we considered a serious issue. So, so my, my request is, is really to, for the minister to make herself available. We will, we will fit into her time during this period. Please, sir, I, 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 I pray for that. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Jose, is your hand up? Yes, Chair. I'm saying the logistics of the next meeting. Is it possible that we leave it to Brian and the office of the minister to check her availability, but the meeting must sit before we go for our recess? Because for now, we are going to take a lot of time discussing the availability of the minister. Whereas no one sitting in this meeting has the answers to that. Maybe we should arrange, we should allow Brian to check with the office of, to your, to your office as the chairperson of the portfolio committee and the office of the minister to check the availability and see where we can, or when can we schedule for that meeting. Okay. Thank you, Chair. No, it's fine. Thank you very much. Uh, colleagues, maybe let's leave it at that.
that we try to have it um, uh, back uh, on the agenda before the end of uh, this this year. We uh, end of we close that that we 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 prorogue on the tenth, I think, on the tenth of December, and that if we cannot have it uh, before between now and then. We possibly uh, do it um, early in, in in the year, but obviously we will have some discussion uh, with uh, with with uh, with the minister. Um, all right, so I want us to leave it, it at that for now, but we have noted the the concerns that the com that the colleagues have expressed in, in the meeting. They are certainly valid. All right, uh, Professor Rees, I see your hand up. I was going to call you up to do your part of the presentation. Uh, Professor Rees, from Zapa. What we wanted just to get clarity, Dr. Smith, and I wanted to get clarity on whether you wanted us to reconvene with you or, or proceed. So if you'd like us to proceed, then I'll invite Dr. Smith to make that presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, um, Prof. Let's, let's proceed, uh, Dr. Semete. Uh, thank you very much. Let me welcome you, Prof, and, and the team. And thank you for uh, you know honoring uh, this meeting. You do when we invite you. We really appreciate that. Uh, CEO, over to you, Dr. Semete. Good morning, uh, some, honorable uh, members. And I will um, take you through the presentation. I'm going to share my screen. Seems you can see it. Yes, I can. Is it possible to eliminate the, oh, there you are. Thank you very much. You now have it full on the screen. Thanks. Thank you. Um, thank you, members. The again. clever uh, chairperson, the clever doctors, they know how to work this uh, technology, right? Eh? Thank you, Wimba. <laughs> uh, and again, thank you for this opportunity. I've got a very short uh, presentation where we'll provide an update um, in terms of the developments regarding this matter. So uh, just to indicate that when um, it pertains to the product, um, this is indeed the interferon alpha 2B, which um, according to our analysis and review, there is currently no scientific data that justifies its use for the management of COVID-19. And that was um, the position that we communicated the last time when, when we met with yourself. I think we gave quite an extensive presentation. We must also note that um, the various batches um, that are currently, or hopefully not anymore, we will understand why I say that, expire in March 2022 and July 2022, respectively. We did have a concern around how this product had come into the country because typically with SAPRA, we work with the Department of Health that would be at all the ports of entries, um, Oatambo, uh, in uh, KZN, et cetera, and we were not um, notified because it didn't come through those ports of entry. Um, it is at this parliamentary session that we had on the 25th of August that we were then made aware that it came um, into the country with the, uh, when the Cuban delegation arrived in April. And that explains why SAPRA would not have known. Had we known about this, I think we would have acted immediately if it came through um, you know, our usual ports of entry because we would be notified of the lack of um, authorization. Um, um, but we've had many discussions with the with the SNDF and, and the military health services in this regard. Chair, if you remember the last time we presented, we indicated that there was a clinical trial application. Um, and this doesn't really address the issue of the 970 odd thousand odd uh, vials. It speaks to data being generated um, on the scientific uh, use of, of on the scientific rationale for the use of this product. So these are separate matters. You'll see I'll now speak to the clinical trial and then I'll speak to the, the, the remaining, um, the other batches in the next coming slides. So we did receive an application on the 9th of May. We reviewed this, we sent out queries um, uh, to uh, the applicant um, in July and um, there was many back and forth. There were many uh, delays in response or lack of response, uh, but the last response, um, that uh, we received was on the 30th of September, uh, wherein the um, uh, military health service was indicating that they will procure the services of a clinical research organization to conduct this trial for them, as they were not able to adequately address our queries 
um, from our clinical trial scientific committee. And within that, there was no uh, time frame given in terms of when this uh, CRO would be appointed, but it would constitute a new study. So basically, we then communicated in October that the study is not authorized because the queries that we had issued were not adequately uh, submitted. So as we speak, there is no clinical trial discussions taking place between SAPRA and the military health services. The study was not authorized. Um, in terms of then uh, the other arm of this discussion, we had indicated that because, you know, um, SAPRA and the military health services are organs of state, we, um, uh, 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 as defined uh, in this intergovernmental relations framework act, we resolved to evoke the provisions of section 40 of this act and the letter um, to this effect was submitted to the DG at the Department of Defense on the 23rd of August. And we presented this when we met with yourselves on the 23rd. We subsequently received a response on the 6th of September indicating that we can continue. However, it, it wasn't an enabling response because we didn't, we were not provided details of who to engage with and how to go about this process. So this process has in essence halted um, and things have been quiet since then. Furthermore, um, when um, the Department of Health had an acting minister um, at the time, Minister Nguban, um, we received an indication that the ministers of health, finance and, De and defense would um, initiate a process wherein the DGs in these different departments would convene a meeting between SAPRA and the military health services to um, facilitate the resolution of this matter. Uh, to date, this meeting hasn't um, uh, taken place. So as we said, uh, Chair, the current status is that we issued a letter um, that indicates this letter was issued on the 6th of November. We issued a letter that indicates that um, because there hasn't been a mechanism to firstly provide the scientific data, even outside of the clinical trial, provide the scientific data for the use of these 970,000 odd files, um, we have tried to address this matter and these um, interventions have not been fruitful. We have to operate um, as per our mandate and as per what the act requires um, of us in that um, this product was to be returned to Cuba or we will have to, by the 30th of, 30th of November, which was yesterday, or we will have to confiscate and destroy the product. As I indicated, this letter was sent to the military health services on the 6th of November. Uh, we didn't receive any acknowledgement, but we trust um, uh, that they uh, did receive our communication this morning. Um, so we haven't received any, any communication in this regard. And um, they have now this morning received a letter where we are asking for evidence and proof that this product has been uh, returned. If not, we will then have to confiscate uh, the product um, because it was then in the country uh, uh, um, unauthorized. So this is the latest um, communication uh, to the military health services. So where we said, if we don't receive this evidence, we've given them until Friday. If we don't receive the evidence that this product has been returned, um, our team is ready then um, to go and uh, have to confiscate um, this product as per the act. And then lastly, Chair, we've been having a number of engagements with the Auditor General uh, of South Africa and um, in our engagements, we've provided them all the correspondences between um, ourselves, <coughs> excuse me, between ourselves and um, um, the military health services um, right from the beginning when we were tackling this matter. So they have all our communication. Um, we also provided them with the communication that the clinical trial uh, was not authorized. So this is no longer an option on, on, on the table for generating the required scientific data, at least for now, unless if they come back. But again, even if they come back, the numbers that would be utilized for the clinical trial are quite small, and you've noted the expiry dates um, of these products. Um, the latest meeting we had with the, with the AG was on the 5th of November, where we've provided them with this um, feedback. And because also there was a non-compliance by, by the medical uh, professionals, at the military health services, the act does require that we report this non-compliance to the Health Professions Council of South Africa. So Chair, Chair, if I could just summarize where we speak, this matter is reaching conclusion. From a SAPRA perspective, we will either get evidence 
between today and Friday that this product has been sent back. If not, we will then go confiscate and destroy the product. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, it's very straightforward. And um, let me invite, um, thank you very much, uh, Doc. Let me invite um, uh, the AG uh, to come and to, to just give us um, update on uh, the role as mandated by the law. Uh, I don't know, and I, I saw... Um, morning, Chairperson. Hi, how are you? Finding yourself. Uh, good morning, honorable chairperson, honorable members. Um, thank you for the invite. Um, Mr. Tsetsi will uh, take you through our brief, brief presentation and then we will take questions. Thank you very much. Please, please introduce yourself, uh, uh, Mr. Van Fielen. Honorable chairperson, my name is Lawrence Van Fielen. I'm the uh, business unit leader responsible for the audit of the Department of Defense in the Auditor General. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Van Fielen. Uh, Ms. Uh, Sondezi, uh, uh, the platform is yours. Uh, good morning, Chair and Honorable Members. Uh, thank you for, for this opportunity to, to present um, on the update on this uh, interference procurement. We start off to just highlight our mission as the AG. We exist to strengthen this country's democracy by enabling oversight, accountability, and governance in the public sector through the audit work that we are doing with the aim of building public confidence. Jefferson, this report basically highlights all the findings that we reported in terms of the special report that was tabled in, in December 2020. And you also highlighted then the follow-up work that we've done and the status thereof of each of the findings. The first finding related to the non-submission of information that we requested, which resulted in a number of audit limitations. So we did follow up during the audit work that we were doing for the 2020-21 audit cycle. And in the end, not all information that we requested was provided uh, for, for the audit. And we've, highlight, we've highlighted also in this presentation what this information entails. In the main, it was in relation to the manufacturer stability data that were required, and also the documentation in relation to the inter international uh, importation of the drug, as well as the transportation and recording for in specifically for the second shipment of, the, of, the, of, of this uh, drug. And lastly, there was an internal report that was also, we, that we requested and was also not provided. The second finding, related to the fact that we could not get clear information on how the department determined required quantities that they procured for Hebron. So in this regard, when we did a follow-up, we still could not obtain sufficient evidence to substantiate how the department came up with the numbers that they procured. The third finding was in relation to the procurement process in that there was an open-ended contract that was used during the procurement and this agreement was only signed after the first delivery had taken place. The department in indicated that the no procurement process was followed in this regard because they used uh, the project to sign on to procure the, the, the drugs. We have during the audit concluded that all expenditure procured under project to sign will result in irregular expenditure because no specific procurement process was followed and no deviations also obtained in relation to project to Sano. The next findings relate to the fact that there was no post importation testing. We did identify um, the vials, so that certain vials were stored uh, within the, the ranges that were outside what was, what was recommended uh, by the manufacturer. And we highlighted that this finding, our finding was that the integrity then of those vials may be possibly compromised and we recommended that these must be investigated. The investigation was subsequently then done by SAPRA relating to those uh, vials that were possibly compromised. Then the next finding related to the fact that uh, none of the, the vials that were uh, procured were accounted in the department's inventory system and that the payment of 34 million was not accounted for in the financial records of the department. In our follow-up, we confirmed that the payment was subsequently 
correctly accounted for in the department's books. However, in terms of recording these uh, vials in the department's inventory system, that has had not yet taken place at the time of the review. The, the last finding relates to the fact that um, the, there was no evidence of approval or prior approval uh, in terms of bringing or importing the Hebron drugs. The only subsequent approval or reauthorization that was given by SAPRA only related to the 10 vials um, as opposed to the 97895 vials that were imported. So in our follow-up is also confirmed by SAPRA no other authorization has been given then to, to the department uh, to administer uh, the other vials that were procured. And we have then also indicated that this non-compliance as it relates to uh, the importation of the drugs without authority from SAPRA has also resulted in a material irregularity. Chairperson, we have outlined then uh, the, the, the matter relating to the importation of the drugs without op uh, obtaining authority as required by the, the laws and regulations of the country. And we are highlighting that this non-compliance specifically of bringing these drugs without authorization has resulted then in a likely material financial loss of 260 million, which is um, in relation to all the drugs procured because without that authorization, the department cannot administer the drugs. We are also looking at the fact that the expiry dates are approaching, uh, starting in March 2022, um, up to July or April, and also April 22 for some of the vials. So for that reason, we have concluded that this non-compliance then of importing the drugs without approval from the regulating authority has then uh, resulted in a material irregularity and this was communicated then to the accounting officer on the 13th of August, 2021. And on the 28th of September, the, the accounting officer responded to the material irregularity by indicating that the department was in a process of appointing a clinical research organization to assist them in, in obtaining this approval from SAPRA for the purpose of doing research trials. We are also then highlighting recommendations or how the the accounting officer can address uh, the, the material irregularity that was um, uh, reported to them. So in our, in our recommendations or as part of the material irregularity uh, process, we highlight um, that the accounting officer must prevent this likely financial loss from occurring. And also the accounting officer should then do an investigation to identify the officials that were responsible for importing the drugs without authority or approval, and therefore causing this likely material financial loss to the department. And that appropriate business steps must then be taken against the officials that were involved, and that this must be done within a reasonable time. And then lastly, that if any losses were then suffered by the department, the accounting officer must determine if those officials are also liable by law for purposes of recovery. So, Chairperson, this is our report as it relates to, to this quarter. Thank you. Colleagues, thanks. I, I don't know what to say, um, but the two entities, agencies, are really acting in terms of their own mandates. Um, um, the SAPRA has indicated uh, the options available now uh, going forward, and they are pretty determined uh, to invoke those uh, options. Um, the AG also, uh, you know, uh, is mentioning the steps they are taking. Uh, to enforce uh, accountability on this uh, particular uh, area. So now the matters are before us. However, <clears throat> we should also note that the, the minister is still, uh, you know, uh, waiting or studying uh, the report of the military of the ministerial task team on on the matter. I don't know how far we want to take the discussion on the matter. 
let me just hear you first. Uh, Mr. Mare, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Ries, and, um, and uh, Mr. Uh, uh, and Lawrence Van Fieren. Uh, Mr. Mare? Uh, thank you very much. Thank you to, to both um, for these uh, presentations, short, sweet, and to the point. I think there can be no doubt in terms of, of their findings. And uh, uh, clearly, as, as I think Sapra has also indicated, uh, you know, what is their, their, their legislative stand uh, as a regulatory authority in South Africa um, and also order the general. So both of these are very clear. And I think if you read these together, uh, you will see that um, either they must urgently load those those uh, those uh, um, um, uh, medicine back to Cuba urgently for the Cubans to 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 use it and to re and to uh, credit us. Um, alternatively, you know we have got a major loss on our hand, and this was known very very long time ago, and we have raised this last year. And if we are sitting at the end with losses of 260 million rand or just short of that, uh, someone must be held accountable and responsible. The accounting officer, if I read this, these reports, plus previous ones, it seems like there was always commitments made, but the commitments was never honored by the Department of Defense. For whatever reasons, they were not honored. And the, and the SECDEF is not here to defend herself, but she had, she had the opportunity to, to, to be here and to present and to defend herself. This is incredibly disappointing. There's no doubt that there was illegal actions uh, according to both SAPRA and, and, uh, and, and the Auditor General. And even if you read the ministerial task team report that was or presentation that was sent to us, there's no doubt about what is going on here. And, and we hope that we will not get a situation where they will, there's, there's, there's going to be efforts to cover up. You remember the presentation that we have received, I think it was in Pretoria, where, where uh, Je, um, Major General Talisi was, was presented as being the, the, you know, the, the kingpin or the, or the link between the Cubans and, and the, um, the South African National Defense Force and the Military Command Council. We must see accountability here. And it's now going to be up to us, Chairperson, as, as, a, as Parliament. Are we going to sit back and see that, you know, laws has been transgressed, total ignorance that has taken place, or what will we do? That's why the meeting with the minister and the ministerial task team is so urgently important, because we have to report back to Parliament on this. And what are we going to report back? Just that the defense force is delaying and delaying and delaying and delaying. There's always reasons. And if you read both these reports, that time is now gone. They are either going to, to ship it back or SAPRA is going to seize those, those fails. Um, and then it's out of their hands. Whether they like it or not, they are not above the law. They have to comply with the regulations and the import regulations and medicine regulations, whether they like it or not, whether they believe that, that uh, SAPRA is protecting the, the oligarchs, as they said, that's unacceptable, that's unprofessional. So hopefully we will act very, very strongly and make sure that parliament take action against, even if it's the accounting officer, even if it's the minister, then we have to hold them accountable because this is a disgrace. And in a time where we have not got money for, for equipment and for maintenance, we are wasting millions and millions. It's no wonder National tre Treasury are saying, no more money for you. You are wasting money. You don't actually need money. Thank okay. you, Chair. I hope we will act very, very strong and decisive in this regard. All right. Colleagues, uh, I, I knew that they would, uh, other than what we have heard and, 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 um, and, and commented uh, and the presentation today, um there isn't really much um we, we can say but to leave it to the institutions to the regulatory institutions uh to institution sabra and and then the ag 
uh, or to deal with it in terms of um, the, their own mandate. You see, the, the matter is still going to come back uh, to us uh, because um, it's, it's, it's now recorded in the AG report and uh, there is no way uh, the matter would be concluded without us knowing um, the conclusion. So, so I don't think we should, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, worry that even if we don't spend much time on it, the matter will disappear. No, certainly not. The SAPRA will <clears throat> file a, a closeout report uh, on the matter. We may not have to call them back, uh, even if they simply write to us that this is the closeout report, because somebody must close close the file. And, 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 and uh, all we're interested in is how they close the file. And uh, so that is for Sabra. And the AG will be following it up until uh, it's a, a logical conclusion. So yes, on the other side, we're still waiting for, for the report on the uh, ministerial task team. I see, I see uh, uh, Bukas and, uh, and Mafanya. Uh, Honorable Bukas and Honorable Mafanya in that order, colleagues. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Chair, mine is also just to thank them for the presentation, but maybe I missed uh, uh, the part from the AG. I just want to know, Chair, it's a clarity question. Uh, when did they when did they send the, the report to the department uh, for the recommendations? Because for us, when we engage with the department to see what happened to that, of how far are they with the recommendations? Thank you, Chair. Sorry, sorry, which report, uh, Ms. Bikas, are you talking about? The, the report of the AG. There are certain recommendations. The presentation of the AG, there are certain recommendations that they made to the department. So I just want to understand, did the department already receive the report from the AG? Or what is the, the case? Maybe I missed it, Chair. Yes, all, all I know is that the matter has already been flagged. Uh, the expenditure um, that has the money that has been paid so far is already been flagged as an as an in, as an ir irregular expenditure, is in the report of the. Agency. But che, there yes. is certain the recommendations that the report make to the department. So okay. I just yes, no, I just sorry. want to yes, I just want to understand when did the department receive the report so that we can follow up on the recommendations? All right. Is there any progress on the recommendations? Thank you, Chair. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Mafanya. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and colleagues. And uh, I would like to thank for both uh, presentations, which are quite ins insightful. Uh, the other thing is that uh, it, it's been quite a while that we have been dealing with this thing and uh, with this matter and 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 what we came up with at some point was that there were transgressions we picked up there were transgressions in, in both uh, the the issues that happened with uh, within the the armpit of uh the financials and all that now the question is that what do we do about it now because trans does that actually illegalities and, 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 and crime has been committed in a nutshell. And, and, and it is not for us to say, how do we prosecute them? The matter has got to be deferred to be deferred to legal entities to deal with the matter so that proper investigations are made and so that we have we reach a, a conclusion to the matter. Because now we, we, we are running in cycles because we already, even with the previous minister, we dealt with the matter and she also said she was not even aware as the minister, as a political head in this aspect, that there, there were things that were happening behind her back. And the new minister also is not abreast with issues. He still has got to start uh, the issues. And now the DM also, is also has been made aware of the issues stood in today's meeting that he's, he's already abreast with matters, that there are illegal matters, illegal issues and transgressions in this matter. 
Now, the issue is that we have to defer the matter to legal entities and so that they deal with this thing and make proper investigations and cases must be open. That's the end of it. Thank you, Chair. Okay. All right. No, no, sure. I, I hope we, last time, if the colleagues remember, they would recall, was, was that um, we, the committee said, Minister, now that you know that um, uh, certain laws were violated in the procurement and, uh, and the transportation of these drugs, of this drug into our country, what are you going to do about it? And um, so the minister then appointed a military test team, which will go uh, dive into deep dive into into the matter, um, come up with findings, and uh, make recommendations um, uh, to her. I, I don't want us to preempt that part. Um, let's let's give the minister time uh, to uh, do the things that she wants to do, uh, and then come back on it when she is ready to do a presentation uh, on the net. Uh, suffice to say that the two agencies have done their bit. And uh, we can only conclude on the report that has been given to us. Um, one, that uh, <clears throat> SAPRA, uh, I think they have done a good job. And all we need from them is a closer report. And uh, they're very close to uh, making a conclusion on the matter. So that report will be in writing. And, uh, and, and then uh, AG has filed the first part, um, the, 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 the asphalt, the, a report on their um, uh, investigation and they made some recommendations and, uh, and they're expecting the Secretary for Defense to, you know, respond. And uh, so it means that the matter will not go away until such time the accounting officer has acted in terms of uh, the laws that are mandated, are mandating her to act. Now, let's deal with the responses. And uh, I am sure I can release Sabra. Sabra, do you want to do a final comment so that I can release you before I go to AG? Thank you very much. No, um, no, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Um, Clearly, this, this kind of outcome isn't what anybody wants. Um, but um, as you quite rightly said, the regulatory authority is a, is, a, is a creature of statute. And that's what eventually we had to adhere to. But, but I, I do want to say that in the context of the pandemic, um, Dr. Samete and her team, uh, we, we tried very hard to find a solution that would be helpful because in a pandemic, things are not usual. And as long as we were working within our remit, uh, we tried to find um, a, a, a better way out than perhaps we might be, be left with at this stage. But sadly, it doesn't seem at this point that that, that is possible. Um, so, so that is my comment. I don't know if Dr. Smetti would like to add to that, but thank you so much. And we will certainly provide a, a closing report to me. And thanks, um, uh, Chair, and um, um, Chair, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity for us to give the feedback. We did indeed, I think, try to resolve the matter, but um, the lack of response, um, you know, was quite concerning. And it is important that as uh, regulators, we act as per our mandate. Um, and thanks for the understanding and the support that we have received um, from this portfolio committee. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Samet, and thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Rees, and uh, you are free to leave. And uh, AG. Thank you.
Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. So um, we've been communicating uh, on, on this matter with the accounting officer since November last year. Uh, that is uh, when we did the work on, on SR1. So since then, we've been making recommendations to the accounting officer to investigate, take appropriate action, and, and, and to limit the financial loss. So the last communication was then the one on the 13th of, of August. Um, where we then in the notification of the material irregularity again then um, uh, highlight to the accounting officer that uh, she must take action to prevent losses from taking place and investigate and 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 and, and take uh, and, and consider uh, to take appropriate action and then in terms of our process in terms of the material irregularity process um, since um, we are uh, not uh, comfortable at this point in time that the accounting officer is taking appropriate action, we are then busy internally uh, to take a decision on, on the next step uh, in terms of the material irregularity process, uh, which then um, could incl include um, also making um, recommendations which will go into the into the audit report. But, but the accounting officer at, the, at this point is aware of what should be taken to resolve this uh, material irregularity uh, to prevent it from moving on to the next step. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so that, that does that cover everything uh, AG wanted to say? Uh, Bali, are you okay? Um, thank you, Chairperson. Yes, I'm covered. Thank you. Bali, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and Lawrence uh, from AG, uh, thank you very much. And you have actually assisted us, assisted us a great deal. I'm not sending you away. Uh, uh, please remain in the meeting uh, because we are still dealing with other issues that you may have an interest in as the office of the AG. All right, so that then concludes uh, the discussion on the issue of um, uh, the procurement of uh, the, the unregistered drug. Uh, now let's move to, I skipped one item, right? And there's an it, item on the, on, 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 on the matters arising. Uh, we called for the register of all uh, irregular expenditure, fruitless and uh, wasteful expenditure. That is after the department uh, made a presentation uh, last week on selected um, uh, of what you call um, cases. And uh, we took exception uh, to, to, to that. Um, but this time they've given us all the register and uh, maybe they want to talk to the register in brief, uh, but we would want to see uh, you know, what the department is doing about it and progress report on each of, uh, of, of the cases in, in a similar way that they've dealt with the six cases that were presented last year. Dr. Kumete, sorry, Kamete. Um, thank you very much, Chair and members um, of the committee. Uh, we submitted the report, it's about um, almost 400 entries uh, long, uh, but if you want a summary, that will be difficult, but I'll ask, um, the, the CFO was unable to uh, log on um, due to some technicalities in his, in, in his environment. So I will request Mr. Ide Mabotzi, who's responsible for um, managing these matters um, in the CFO environment to just give you a brief summary of what to look for and uh, how to read the report um, in, 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 in a way that will be meaningful to, to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Abodzi. Yes, no, thanks, Mr. Abodzi. Thank you, Chair and members of the Portfolio Committee. Chair, based on the report that we have submitted to you, uh, what we have done is we've given you a schedule that shows the year in which the irregular expenditure was incurred, the environment that it affects, and then what are we doing so far per case? As Dr. Gamedi has indicated, there is over 
400 cases in total of irregular expenditure within the department. The schedule that we've also provided to you gives you details of, uh, we've actually, um, the register starts from the highest value of irregular expenditure to the lowest. So it gives you a better um, understanding of, of where we are as a department. What we presented to you, uh, I think last week and over the last couple of times we presented to the portfolio committee, we've always presented on average about 85% of our irregular expenditure. So um, the, the last column of the register will indicate to you where we are, who has done the investigation, is it a board of inquiry within the department? Is it uh, an investigation that is being done by an external, um, forensic organization? Is it an investigation that is being done by the, uh, the military police or the IG or the internal audits? So it gives you all those details where there was possible instances of fraud or corruption. There are case numbers which are linked to uh, police, other SAPS case numbers or military police case numbers. So this gives you a better understanding of where we are per case. So Chair, the register that we sent to you has all that information. And I think after review by the Chair and the, and the members of the portfolio committee, if there are specific other questions that you may have on specific cases, then we'll be able to provide that to you. It's a bit difficult to give you more detail because this is quite a confidential information since some of the cases are under investigation and we don't wanna compromise. The, uh, the the status of, of the investigations. So I think as and when you need specific details on specific cases, we'll be able to provide that to you either in writing or we can meet the committee and then give them details of specific cases and where we are. But that, that's basically a just a summary of what the register contains. Thank you, Chair. No, no, thank you very much. You've done very well, uh, uh, DOD on the matter. You've really responded to our, our concern and then, but let me, before I look on the, uh, look, I, I look at the colleagues uh, for hands, uh, let me just check if the, I understand the, 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 the process well. The, the report will be kept updated as and when um, you discover more, um, uh, financial misconduct in this environment, isn't it? Yes, Chair. Uh, it's actually a work in progress document. So we update this document as and when we receive information from the various environments that are investigating. Most of the investigations are done by the various services and divisions within the department. So every environment that in case irregular expenditure must convene a board of inquiry. And then based on that, once uh, an update has been, or a case has been finalized, within finance division, we are informed of it. And then we update the register and then the recommendations are then presented to the chief of that specific division or, or service who must act upon it. And then a copy is sent through to the accounting officer and the chief of the SNDA. So it is a progress document. We update it as and when an update has been received from the military police, from the SAPS, or from wherever the investigation emanated from. This report um, uh, does not deal with the concern that the AG raised on the uh, incomplete, um, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, record uh, of a, or register of uh, irregular expenditure where you were required to go back uh, to the population because they, they sample. And in their sampling, they say, man, look, we still detect um, uh, uh, areas of uh, irregular expenditure. It means that the department has not um, completed the exercise, in which case they refer the whole population back to you to look at and then come back to them saying you have satisfied yourself after I've looked at the population that there are no further uh, areas of um, uh, irregular, um, uh, what you call the expenditure or wasteful or fruitless. Um, are you taking that into account as well? Thank you, Chair. Yes, we are. Um, at the last meeting, 
the accounting officer reported that we have requested the service of the internal audit division to do this investigation for the department over the last three years. So the uh, investigation of the internal audit division is still ongoing. There was a draft report they gave to the CFO about a week ago, uh, which is where they have, uh, out of the 73 procurement units, they have already almost finalized about half of it. Our target is by the end of the financial year, we should have been able to finalize a bulk of the investigations to identify additional irregular expenditure to deal with the completeness qualification from the AG. So uh, the AG has already started auditing for the current financial year, and they are busy with the status of records review. So the internal audit division has indicated that by the end of, or just before the December break, they should be able to finalize um, at least the draft report to be able to give to the AG for them to go to the environment, the procurement units, where we have finalized this uh, additional investigation for the AG to be able to go back in the audit and confirm the completeness of what we've done so far. So it is a work in progress. Uh, we really doing the best we can as a department to ensure that uh, we cover all 73 procurement units and uh, to be able to at least identify additional irregularities that were not picked up initially for the agent to be able to resolve this whole uh, completeness of irregular expenditure. So we are confident that based on the work we've done so far, uh, when the AG comes in and looks at the methodology that we've applied and the additional irregular uh, expenditures that we've, we've picked up, they should be able to have some kind of comfort that there is some controls that we've implemented internally to be able to resolve this completeness uh, qualification. Thank you, Chair. Are, are there any timelines uh, that have been agreed upon between yourself and, and the AG to, on, on this aspect of, of the work? so that we, we, we don't bother you until after the which you were supposed to do the exercise. Thank you, Chair. We haven't formally communicated with them, but um, we will communicate with our individual auditors. Uh, they've already started with the business processes. So once we are done with the interim report by the end of December, once we all come back in early January, first week or so in January, when the AG opens, we should be able to share this information with them to be able to consider in their interim audits uh, uh, processes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just in terms, first of all, in terms of the timelines, can we then also get a copy in, in the first in January so that we as a committee can consider also the input from from the internal order uh, and even if it's just draft reports the same that they provide to the auditor general so at least we can we can look at that because you know we have to look at this sooner than later because it's not only this that that we are that we have now on the report we have just now dealt with the with the with the cuban medicine story which will also become a, a matter in this regard and we know that there are others that we have that we have seen and and have become aware of, so so in other words, we must we must try to consider this, and in that report, um, you know, the internal audit capacity and capabilities is 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 something that I'm not quite quite sure myself and and comfortable that they are up to the job in terms of total. I'm not saying that the individuals are not committed. But whether there are enough people that can do the job, and 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 if that requires that we must go to national treasury or to somewhere to say, is there we, any way that we can get, get assistance for them to to get to a finality that that they can cross all the t's and dot all the i's uh, going forward because we cannot afford that this kind of situation repeats itself every year. It has to come to a point where we draw a line. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mare, my, my problem is, is when we run ahead of the AG's office um, and, and uh, we don't have that capacity. Uh, I would prefer the committee to await uh, the submission uh, to the AG's office. Um, 
because the AG must then confirm that all, her, all their concerns have actually been addressed in respect of this particular matter, and then report back to us. My, my Jefferson, problem, I've got, yeah, I've got no problem with that, and I know that the efficiency from the Auditor General, they will probably be able to provide us with a report shortly after they've re received the draft report. Um, it's just that, in, in, you know, I've come to learn that we are always get information that is a year old, and then it's too late. Then so oh. many things just happened in between. So we have to come to a point to say, now it must be different. No, no, let's, let's place it on the agenda, you know, and call them to account. If we also space it six months apart, then by the time we get it, it will be two, year, it will be, uh, uh, two years uh, or three years. But if we are consistent in the manner we call for information, uh, and we time it in such a way that we get it right in time, you see, if we don't do that, then we'll have a problem. It will come back to what you're saying. For now, I think we are having a hang on the matter. The department it's, has gone back to the population. They've done all the half of the centers and um, or rather they now have done half of the uh, you know, population that is under consideration and they are indicating that they may finish by the end of, of this year or possibly early in the new year and, uh, and immediately thereafter uh, refer for, for audit general's uh, confirmation is only after that that uh, we will get uh, information that is um, uh, rightly processed for, for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be tripping ourselves, um, we'll be tripping ourselves uh, uh, on, on this matter. All right, AG, you are in the meeting. Uh, <clears throat> is that the right uh, way to deal with it, um, uh, AG? Uh, yes, Chairperson. Um, we will, uh, once the department indicate to us that they are finalized with the process, we will then um, look at it as part, as part of the normal audit process. Because it was a qualification on the completeness of irregular expenditure, we will then have to, to look at, at, at the, all the work that the department has done to, to be able to, to confirm whether we can clear that qualification or not. So uh, it, it will take some time after we receive the, the final go ahead from the department that they read. Thank you. Okay. Uh, colleagues, can you, leave, can, you, can you leave it at that uh, for now? I think that's the uh, right way to, to leave it, to leave the, the matter at. I, I, let me thank the department. We must, because we must thank them when they've really uh, responded um, sincerely and. Um, you know, uh, effectively to, to our request. Now, we have concluded- okay, uh, Absolutely, two, I agree with uh, you. You agree with me. Thank you so much, colleagues. So we end the matter on that one. Then now, Brian, we are left with what? Uh, with the minutes, uh, isn't it? Chair, we are left with the, the DMV report on the pre presidential task team, as well as the minutes. Yeah. The minutes. No, thank you very much. And uh, colleagues, thank you very much. Gamed, uh, I would ask you to do to comment, and thereafter, we have listened to all the discussion, just your closing remarks as the representative of the accounting officer. Uh, the DM will then come, uh, close all these matters uh, from your side, uh, after which we'll then move to the last item. Uh, that requires the department, the DMV, uh, to, to report. Uh, the Deputy Minister of the meeting. Let me start with you, Kamete. Uh, thank you again, uh, Chair, uh, and thank you for uh, the engagement. All I can say from my side as a representative of the SECDEF is that we will try um, by all means to provide a, 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 a what the PCD requires us to provide meet uh, chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kamete. And just uh, uh, convey my weight of gratitude to our team as well. And the DM.
No, Chair, thank you very much. From my side, uh, nothing really to, uh, to submit to the committee. Uh, I think uh, the meeting that uh, was earlier on agreed upon where the accounting officer of the department, the SECDEF, and the minister are in attendance is uh, it's important. And uh, that's what uh, uh, I think from my side, I should uh, allow to take place first. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so we've now concluded all other issues now, colleagues uh, that pertain to the Department of uh, Defense. Uh, we're now left with the, the DMV uh, part, which the Deputy Minister will take us through after which we'll then meet on our own to consider the minutes. Uh, DM, uh, thank you very much. I welcome you, sir, and uh, the platform is yours. On uh, the testing uh, report on the military veterans. Thank you very much, Chair and honorable members. Uh, the report before the committee is a report that uh, was put together by the Department of Military Veterans. And I spoke to the, D, uh, to the DG of the department uh, about it. Uh, I want the committee to discuss this report uh, uh, aware that uh, it is not a report signed off by the PT team, which is uh, led by the deputy president, uh, nor has the report been shared with the ministry. Um, so the mem members of the committee, when they engage with the report, they should not say this is a report that the deputy president is sharing with parliament, nor the ministry. Uh, the DG will present this report and uh, I will come in and make observations uh, with respect to the information we have uh, about this work from the ministry side and uh, point out to areas that, uh, uh, in my view, uh, the committee should note uh, with respect to the issues that uh, are shared in the document. Without any further waste of time, uh, Chair, uh, let me hand back to you. Thank you. No, no, thank you very much, uh, DM. All right, DG, over to you. Um, <clears throat> Understanding that this is not a final report, it's just a prog uh, progress report. Just give us a high level uh, presentation on it. The, the, the Deputy Minister did, uh, I think, Price uh, take, uh, take us through. So please do it with that in mind. All right, over to uh, DG. Uh, welcome, uh, Director General, uh, the Department of uh, uh, Military Veterans. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Good morning to the Chairperson and good morning to Minister in her absence here, the members and our Deputy Minister and colleagues. Uh, indeed, the updated report is as the, our Deputy Minister has presented. Uh, it has not in, uh, taken through all the processes as the meetings were uh, postponed. Uh, it is important also to share with the Chair and the members that I am suffering from a challenge with my voice uh, due to um, exposure of, of, of different weathers when we had to be going uh, to parliament in Cape Town and it affected um, uh, my, my, my courts. I would love my colleague, uh, Mr. Siango, to touch on the areas where we uh, needed to highlight that are linked to the responses that were done in parliament uh, within the report, and then we can be able to take some uh, comments and, and questions going forward. Of course, it will be divided into the work streams. The first work stream, of course, it's going to be the feedback on the legislative work stream and the pensions work stream. And uh, I think my colleague Siango will take uh, the members through in that order so that we don't take a, a, a lot of time. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank, thank you, uh, DG and uh, 
Good um, morning to, to the chair, good morning to the deputy minister, and good morning to uh, honorable members. I will fly through this as indicated. Um, uh, in, in summary, basically, I think I will highlight just four areas where I, I need to provide a high level update in terms of the progress. That is uh, the issue of the legislative review. I think um, the, the processes are still ongoing here. Uh, we did have an opportunity to present you know, the inputs or, or the amended bill to the, to the executive authority. Uh, and then we were provided with inputs. So now the next step for this for this amendment bill to go uh, for public comments. Uh, and then um, uh, just here, I, I just need to indicate here that uh, uh, members that uh, we are preparing now um, as a department for the, as, as, as members are aware that the, the, the term for, for Sanva it come to an end. And now we as a department are preparing, you know, um, for, for conferences, for a conference uh, for Sanva, because we needed to put, uh, I think one is one of the issues that has been raised by AG to, for us to put governance structures around, um, you know, uh, the South African National Military Veterans Association. So we're in the process now of preparing for those, uh, for, those um, you know, for that conference. And then the other issue around um, uh, the uh, perhaps the, the, the pension, or maybe I, I need to come here also on the issue of the social relief of distress, which is one of the issues that was uh, uh, raised, uh, uh, you know, uh, as, as problematic or challenging. We have been engaging with the Department of Social Development, um, and, and I think the engagement has been really positive to the extent that. Um, uh, uh, DSD has uh, found a, a different mechanism in how we can, we are going to be able now to disperse uh, this uh, this particular benefit to, or this particular intervention, uh, not a benefit as such, the intervention to the military veteran. Uh, so we, we are concluding in terms of those um, engagements with them. And and then the issue of, uh, of I think the one other one uh, is, is the issue of the education support. Um, uh, the department currently, as we speak, is on a roadshow to different provinces where we are trying to address all the issues that have been raised uh, by military veterans around issues of education. Um, I think we've been to two provinces now. Currently, the colleagues are in a KZN. Uh, they will move uh, from KZN to, um, uh, to Bloemfontein and then to Northern Cape over the weekend. So we, we, we are collecting invoices and also addressing all the issues that are, are, are being raised by military veterans as we uh, prepare for the new uh, academic year uh, you know, and, and also ensuring that we close this academic year by paying uh, the invoices that are due to military veterans. Then some of the issues here will be addressed as part of the amendment. And, and also I think, um, uh, I just quickly want to um, to come to the issue of the pension, where progress here is is, is ongoing. It's, I think we're making good, good progress around this. And as members would have uh, chair would have uh, had the commitment from the president that we uh, when we assess our progress regarding the pension benefit, uh, we are of the view that. Um, we, we we should be ready by the first of April 2022 to start dispersing uh, this particular benefit. Um, and then the issue of database verification, uh, the work is ongoing here. Uh, recently, uh, uh, there were challenges around uh, you know the work of the verification process. Uh, those issues now, there was a high level meeting where uh, some of the issues were resolved. Uh, I think DM gave a directive for this work to be to be sped up and uh, to be fast tracked. So the work of the verification uh, work stream is ongoing. Um, and, and I'm sure the next time we report on the verification, we'll see um, a, a different numbers on that. And also on the integrated database management system, uh, which has been uh, on the cards for years in the department, we are going to be launching now in December in the second week of December, 
uh, we are going to be launching the first module of this integrated database management system. Uh, it's part of now the uh, you know uh, uh, you know program or a project plan. You know where we are going to be launching various kind of modules linked to different uh, benefits in the department over the next coming uh, six months. So we were quite happy that uh, the work that we've done with CETA now is, is bearing fruits uh, and um, to the extent that now we're going to, to, to have a, a, a fully functional um, integrated database management system to, to ensure that you know, uh, the department moves away from this uh, paper dependency and manual dependency. And then, um, and then uh, again, this um, progress, um, uh, I think we are making, making inroads around repositioning the department on issues of skills development and empowerment, where we've been engaging various uh, sectors and institutions uh, or state organs uh, within government for us to assist the department uh, uh, to provide skills uh, to military veterans or uh, uh, empowerment opportunities for military veterans. Uh, we have signed an MOU with, uh, with L local government CETA, which we are going to be launching soon. Uh, and, and some of the MOUs are in the pipeline, uh, far advanced uh, in terms of, of, of our discussion with our colleagues there, uh, where we are looking at, at, at opportunities, you know, um, business opportunities for military veterans. With LG CETA, I must say that um, they've, um, in our discussion with them as part of the agreement, uh, they are going to be on behalf of DMV coordinating with all these other CETAs, you know, in terms of the various programs that we are proposing, um, uh, you know, to, uh, to intervene, programs that are, you know, high demand in terms of, um, you know, in the economy of the country, so that we ensure that military veterans become really meaningful participants in the economy of, of, of the country, especially in the time where now States SA has released uh, the, the report that they've released around unemployment in the country. So we, we think really we're making inroads in, in this and, and, and the partners have really been supportive of, 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 of these initiatives. And then we also around social economic integration, I think this is also linked to empowerment where Part of what we are doing now, uh, we have identified opportunities, for example, with um, some of the sitters, what they've indicated to us is that uh, they will train military veterans and at the end of, of the training, then they will be able to provide them with uh, tools of trade to start their own businesses. So those are the kind of discussions that we're having uh, with, um, with, with, um, you know, with, with our uh, stakeholders. And, uh, and I must indicate that they are positive and they are at an adv advanced stage. Heritage, uh, again here, we, we, we have been uh, in consultation, I will, I will jump this one with the Department of Arts and Culture, uh, Sports Arts and Culture, uh, there is an MOU amongst us. I think our focus here is around the issue of repatriation of a uh, of, of, of our heroes uh, from other countries. And we have been in discussion with that department regarding this. And then of course, around issues of communication, um, we have really ramped up in terms of our communication. We've been using all sorts of um, media tools uh, for us to be able to reach to military veterans. Um, and uh, I think the work then of the PTT going forward is still going to be visiting you know, other provinces uh, where I think the PTT, I think DM reflected on this, um, would, would, would be providing feedback to military veterans in those particular provinces. I think, uh, Chair, in summary, that's the summarized report, Chair, uh, and, and honorable members. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 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 DG and the uh, deputy, deputy minister. Um, all right. I thought the the the, the DM has to um, come back um, on on after the. 
the presentation. Is the DM still in the meeting? Uh, yes, dear. Chair, are you inviting me in? Yes, I was checking if you are satisfied that we can okay. then discuss the meeting, the, the, the item. Are you satisfied? Uh, no, no, Chair, thank you very much. Uh, I thought that the DG would uh, make comments to what uh, Mr. Siengo has just shared with the committee by way of the highlights of this report. Um, but um, if uh, the chair would allow me um, <clears throat> to profile issues which I believe uh, the committee should uh, take note of. Firstly, um, <clears throat> I want to say to the members of the committee that uh, as uh, we have said, work is a food, um, and there are areas where uh, solutions are being found. Uh, but there are also still areas where we are struggling to uh, find the right solutions. Um, so there is progress, but uh, much more could have been done. Uh, that's what we must register. Uh, the second point, Chair, which I want to, to flag for the members of the committee is that uh, the report that is shared here, uh, when I went through it, I realized that as it is evident uh, in the, some of the details, of the report, it is the report of the DMV, not a report of the work streams of the PTT. Uh, because the work streams of the PTT are expected to come up with solutions which in a very crisp way indicate what the other departments of government and other spheres of government are going to do to assist the DMV. Uh, as you would have uh, yourself, uh, you know, had as uh, Mr. Siengo was making his comments. This is the report of the Department of uh, Military Veterans, of course, on the issues that the work streams are dealing with. Uh, that is the second point that I want the committee members to deal with, I mean, to take note of, because uh, this report, if it was uh, uh, shared with the PTT, the PTT would have wanted to get uh, a good sense of what the work streams themselves are saying they are submitting to the PTT as recommendations by themselves to the PTT around the grievances raised by these uh, uh, military veterans. Uh, now, the, there are issues which are very specific, Chair, if I may, uh, which... Mr. Mdumi seemed to be wanting to intervene, I don't know. Uh, but if I may continue, the Mr. other... The, the other point generally that I want to uh, bring to the attention of the committee members is that, uh, you see, in the report, some of the areas are not uh, accurately reported upon. Uh, for instance, uh, progress around the amendment to the Military Veterans Act. Uh, the document that is shared with the committee here, it says a draft bill is in place and it's waiting to be consulted with the ministry and the PTT and government clusters and gazetted for public comments and taken to cabinet. That is not a progress report. Uh, you'll appreciate. The progress report around the amendment to the act would be strictly to indicate where we are at in that whole 
a list of activities which the report says must happen to say where at which point are we and what i can indicate to the committee is that uh, the draft was indeed shared with the ministry we have uh, entertained the draft and we have uh, made uh, our submissions to the drafters on very important areas draft still does not deal with one of the big areas that the amendment must address, which is the definition of a military veteran. Um, without the draft specifically addressing that satisfactorily, uh, the amendment bill would not take us much forward. We need to have a, a very clear uh, suggestion on how we can improve the definition of uh, who constitute the community of our military veterans. Um, there is an issue there in the report uh, that uh, for me should not be taken uh, by members who are, as they read this uh, report, uh, uh, as what is coming from the PTT. And that's in relation to SANFA. Uh, the PTT has not dealt with the SANVA conference. It is not the responsibility of the PTT to be dealing with the SANVA conference. It's the responsibility of the department. But of course, it is included here. My worry, why I want to flag it is because it says here that DMV has developed the transitional model for funding for military veterans association and that Freedom Park was identified as an institution to assist until the end of the financial year. And in relation to Sandra conference, that the Sandra conference would take place assisted by the Freedom Park uh, with respect to whatever uh, logistics that conference is going to need. I'm just saying that these are issues of the DMV. The DMV must report at its own time to the portfolio committee about uh, many other things that it is doing, including the Sanba conference, but they must not uh, present everything polus polus as work of the PTT because it will create confusion. And uh, for instance, this particular matter, just the decision to have Freedom Park play that kind of role uh, there are issues that we need to ascertain ourselves whether there is compliance there because Freedom Park is not an entity as far as the mandate of the department and the department's policy that resides within DMV. And uh, the role that it is suggested that will be playing here will naturally, you know, raises, uh, you know, issues of uh, compliance that uh, must be you know, taken care of. The other matter that uh, I also wanted to, uh, to raise here is that uh, the report raises the establishment of a separate ministry. This matter, uh, members of the committee must not take it as a matter which the PTT has discussed. Right when the task team was formed, even before the march by these military veterans, uh, this matter was set aside by the president to be returned to and for discussion later on uh, and with the necessary information provided for this matter to be dealt with, whether there is a need to have a standalone ministry for this department. Uh, but as things stands, we know that the department has now status of being a, stand, uh, a separate vote uh, in parliament and it started this financial year and that's where matters are at. Uh, and the PTT has not discussed this political decision that must be taken around uh, whether we should have a ministry or not. I just thought that uh, that should be flexed so that it should not create confusion uh, to members of the committee. Um, the other point, of course, in general, which I do want to 
make uh, members of the uh, committee aware of is that uh, there is a lot that was expected uh, that would have happened by now to get a sense concretely on uh, what provincial departments of government who in their land line function are dealing with the services military veterans needs, how those provincial departments are now going to assist the Department of Military Veterans to have very clear protocols around that. Uh, that is work which has still not been you know, tabled to the PTT, uh, but it is very crucial to have in very concrete terms an understanding, especially around the social services, education, housing, and health, how provinces are now going to be assisting the Department of Military Veterans. Uh, that information is a work that we are still awaiting. And the last point which I want to flag is that uh, with respect to progress provided here around the economic rehabilitation of these military veterans, a uh, mention is made here only of the Department of Agric Agriculture and the Matters Land Affairs uh, uh, are shared here. But uh, I want to make the committee members aware that uh, further information is still being awaited by the PTT to indicate what the other component departments of the economic sector are going to be assisting DMV with in order to absorb military veterans and in order to give military veterans opportunities. That information is not here in the report. Uh, that I thought that it is important for uh, members to take note of. With respect to um, information about what the Department of Military Veterans has done for military veterans over time since its inception, I think the accounting officer must generate a report, and this would be useful, a report to the oversight committee to give a very clear picture of, for instance, how many military veterans since the department was established have received houses? How many military veterans since the department of military veterans was established received education, whether it is at foundation level or it is tertiary education to provide all of those statistics? How many of these military veterans since the department was established have been a community that is covered as far as health services are concerned. The best I view, I'm sorry, of the department's capacity and what it has been able to do should be a separate matter. It should not be brought into the report of this nature and create a, you know, lack of clarity of what the picture is in relation to progress that the work streams are doing and what the department has achieved over the years and what the department is busy with itself as we speak. This issue should not be conflated because the picture will become very blurry and we'll never have a good sense of whether we're moving forward or we are regressing. Uh, that's what I wanted to say, Chair. Um, to the report that has just been shared. Otherwise, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, DM. Um, all right. Uh, uh, Shelembe, I don't know what you're going to say, uh, but say your say. Uh, Chairperson, I mean, uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me, I mean, uh, that, that opportunity. You know, uh, Chairperson, I think, I mean, the Deputy uh, Minister, I mean, has said it all. I was very, very, I mean, uh, disappointed because, you know, I was expecting that uh, this was like, I mean, uh, coming from uh, the presidential task team. But looking, I mean, uh, to what was presented, it was like the mixture now because I was talking about things that were different, I mean, uh, 
from uh, supposed to be coming from uh, the pres presidential task team. Chairperson, I, I would suggest that, I mean, anyway, it might be the waste of time for us to discuss, I mean, that report, because the deputy minister has put it clearly that uh, we must not now make like we are discussing uh, a report from um, the presidential task team, whereas that report is supposed to be coming from the DMV. Now, on my side, I mean, I look at the report, I agree with the deputy president. Say, for instance, how many people applied for houses? How many were rejected? What happened? But the report now seems to be like talking about things that are not uh, exactly what we are expecting from the department. I I'm disappointed, I mean, uh, uh, Chairperson. I think maybe uh, it's better that, I mean, we listen to the deputy uh, minister that, I mean, the, the DMV goes back and prepare the report that will be uh, showing a uh, that will be comprehensive of what I mean uh, the members or the oversight committee is looking for. But for now, to comment, I don't know what uh, how I will be comment um, commenting on that. But Chairperson, let me not waste your time. I think uh, we agree with uh, the deputy minister that uh, the DMV goes back and prepare the report that will be compre comprehensive to the committee. Thank you. Okay. No. Uh, yes, um, I think that the, the DM has given guidance. Uh, the deputy minister has given uh, guidance on the matter. And uh, let's take that uh, as the, the, the suggestion as to how we should move forward uh, on the matter. Uh, and, uh, but we had asked the uh, progress report and it was indicated uh, in, in, at the beginning that the matter is not um, served before the presidential uh, task team itself. Um, maybe we should uh, wait until that has happened, um, served before the presidential team so that it is properly uh, sanctioned. Um, I think it's still too early to uh, discuss it. It's just that we are concerned about the fact that we're now approaching a new budget and uh, there's still no clarity on, on these matters and uh, which impact on, on, on the budget. You see? So we, we and, and it's clear now that uh, the, the budget is, always, is going to overtake these matters. By the time they are concluded, they will not, uh, you know, be, they would have no adequate funding uh, to be given effect to. Yes, they can adjust, they can still adjust their budget, but my word, it, 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 it's a budget following function when it should be the other, other way around, function following a budget, or a resources a following function, not the other way around. But be that as it may, we understand we are fixing uh, the aircraft uh, as it, uh, uh, whilst flying it, and uh, let's, let's accept this. Uh, that uh, you will take it back, um, come back now with a, uh, we'll take it away and then come back with something that has gone through through the thing. But indeed, we want to know how is the work of the task team dovetailing into the work of the department. And uh, so that uh, we see for ourselves, how is this process uh, assisting us in unraveling the issues that have uh, bedeviled uh, this portfolio committee. And um, um, okay, uh, I don't see any other hand. Uh, DM, let me uh, thank you, thank the team, and then say we'll give you time uh, to look at this matter. We knew that would, uh, they would. Uh, you know, they would take a bit of time and uh, they're quite an involved issue. Some 
can only be addressed through via an amendment to legislation. And they've been with us for a very long time. Obviously, a month or two or three would not be adequate uh, to deal with this. All right, so we'll, we'll leave it at that for now and then say, maybe let's give you another six months, I don't know, and then have a report sometime in June. Uh, but obviously, it doesn't exonerate the department from dealing with the accounting on the day-to-day -day, uh, work of, of, of the department. Uh, six months DM, uh, meeting around June. Colleagues, do you agree with me at around June, they're about? Chairperson, latest, yes. I mean, if possible, earlier. But I mean, you know, we have to, we have to set time, time limits on this. Thank you. All right. Latest, DM, latest. Um, uh, yes, and uh, but would appre appreciate if you could, um, you know, uh, have this, um, have the the, the speed uh, increased or the pace um, ramped up a bit. All right. Correct, yeah. Sure. Thanks. All right. No, no. Correct, chair. I agree with you that uh, uh, um, the grace period uh, could be what uh, the committee suggests. However. Uh, I think as soon as the PTT has convened to receive the report from the work streams uh, and uh, has uh, made decisions on what should happen, we can bring that report uh, of the PTT to the committee. Uh, that will assist. We, we will await to uh, uh, DM uh, on that aspect because you would know when that has happened. All right? That's right. Thank you very much, sir. All right, colleagues. Thanks, thanks so much. Let me thank the, 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 the DMV. Um, we only have one item now, and uh, is the minutes. But, but I have since received a letter from the, from the Chief of Staff, or, or let me say the Defense Force, uh, in relation to one matter that is on the agenda next week. Uh, but before we deal with the minutes, um, it's, it's this letter. Let me just raise this letter, colleagues, because it impacts on our program next week. Uh, Brian, uh, is it possible to flight the, I hope I'm not mixing uh, issues up. Is, is it possible to flight the, the, the program for, for till the end of the term? So that we, we look at um, the outstanding issues uh, and consider the matter that they are raising. <clears throat> All right. Okay, is this item on the 8th? Um, it, it's force, uh, force design and, uh, and force structure. Uh, and two, the utilization, um, the utilization, utilization plans uh, of the reserves. And um, so these are the two. And the letter I received from the from from uh, the department, it reads so that we factor it. Uh, this one, all right. There it is. Okay, it reads, colleagues. Uh, <clears throat> I'll I'll share with you. It, it says. Next week, I think it's this one. All right, it, it reads as follows. Fourth term program portfolio committee on defense and military veterans, uh, uh, adjustments on the first design and force structure based on a funding driven approach. The fourth term program for engagement with the Portfolio Committee on Defense indicated the requirement to discuss the impact of fiscal constraints on the human resource requirement 
and how the force design and the force and force structure will be adjusted accordingly. This was asked in the light of the Minister of Defense and Military Veteran statement that open quote, strategically, we have now transitioned from being mandate driven to being a fund, a fund, fund driven or funding driven, a close quote. Two, the impact of the funding constraints of the force design and force structure will have a direct effect on the combat readiness of the South African Defense Force. It will therefore reflect on South Africa's ability to respond to crisis, internal and external uh, to the country. This will also reflect on the ability of the SNDF to execute its current operations and its constitutional mandate. This will have an impact on the national security construct of South Africa and the deterrence profile on the country. Three, it is therefore in reality related to combat readiness. Matters of combat readiness are normally discussed and not normally discussed in an open forum as it can compromise national security. In the case of the Department of Defense and Military Veterans, such matters are discussed in the Joint Standing Committee on Defense in a closed uh, meeting. The Department of Defense therefore respect, respectfully suggests that uh, matters pertaining to the force design and force structure and combat readiness be discussed uh, in the JSCD and not in the, P, in the PCD, in the Portfolio Committee on Defense. Colleagues, that's, that's a letter. It's, it's in relation to the item next week. I think it came on time uh, to, to rescheduling if the committee agrees. That's what in, would require the department to do should they have, you know, should a, 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 a situation, uh, should a situation arise um, that may present a difficulty in transacting the matter on the agenda uh, to come ahead of time so that we can reschedule accordingly. So colleagues, this is asking for rescheduling in rescheduling, moving this to the JSCD and close the, and, and close the, and close the meeting so that it could be transact, transacted in camera. And um, all right, uh, comments, colleagues, uh, Mare? Uh, Chairperson, thank you very much. Um, uh, there are two things. Um, they again says that, you know, we, we basically implying that we cannot discuss this um, on the, in the forum of our committee. Uh, and that's similar to in the past where they always claim that certain things can only be done in a closed session. Uh, and then we never get to a closed session where we can really discuss that. That's the one thing we have talked about, and it's in our minutes where we talked about uh, the strengths and, and reserve force members that we use. Um, so, so funding is the, 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 re, the, the responsibility of our portfolio committee. Um, and anything that relates to, to the funding, it's, it's a responsibility of the portfolio committee. It's not the joint standing committee that deals with budget and funding issues and funding models, etc. So, and the secondly, I find it strange and, and maybe um, Brian can inform us or we can get a opinion from the, from the legal advisors. I find it strange that the Department of Defense has got an opinion of what our, our parliamentary responsibility and oversight should be and can be. Uh, I find it very, very, I mean, that's an indictment on us that basically we, we don't know what we are doing. We cannot decide on our own in terms of what we want to come to the portfolio committee. I find it totally unacceptable. Um, it is our prerogative and the, 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 the parliamentary rules are very, very clear. Um, and, and, you know, we will find ourselves in a situation that if we want to talk about the budget and how we are going to fund certain things in the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, it will have to be referred back to us to talk about, you know, the financial implications and how we are taking that forward. I, uh, I do not accept um, 
their advice or their guidance or whatever they want to call it. It is our prerogative and they should come to us uh, and brief us on what we want them to do. We have considered this, this program and I cannot see the justification of, of uh, you know, um, uh, basically say yes to what they are saying to us. So, so I, I find it very arrogantly. Uh, it is not their prerogative. It is ours and nobody else. Not even the minister can tell us what we cannot do and uh, can't do in terms of the parliamentary rules. So that's what I submit to you. Uh, it is not their place to tell us what we can do and not do. Thank you very much. Okay. I think the request in, in, in short is to have the meeting um, closed. Uh, do you have an objection to that? Um, giving, giving the issues that they want to brief us about. Uh, it's about combat readiness and they think that um, information that they may release may actually uh, compromise uh, national security. They know what they're going to brief us yeah. about. So can we grant them that request? Well, I, uh, if, yes, yes. Uh, if, 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 we read between, if we read between the lines in terms of what their objective is, yes, most certainly I've got much appreciation for the fact that there are certain information that we all know that we have to deal with very, very responsibly and very confidentially. If that is in case, in fact the case that they want to share with us that kind of information, most certainly, most certainly, we grant them a, a closed session meeting. I've got no objection to that, provided that they really share with us the information that, that is for a closed session. But to tell us what we can do and what yeah. we not can do in a portfolio committee with regards to funding and financing and, and going forward and considering funding models, totally unacceptable. All right. Colleagues, let, let's, let's grant them. A, a closed uh, meeting, and um, whether in a, I think uh, whether in a portfolio committee or or, or joint standing committee on on defence, I understand why they are, uh, are requesting that platform. Uh, they think that uh, the JSD it's naturally a closed meeting, and um, uh, yes, we can close it. I think we can also close the portfolio committee on 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 on, on defense as well. And, correct. Uh, Absolutely, you're correct. You're hundred percent correct. May, maybe let's let's close it. Is it possible for all of us to be together um, on the on in, uh, just under one roof to close the meeting? Close it and have it in their headquarters next next week Wednesday. I don't know what the situation is like, uh, colleagues. Um, Brian, is it possible to to uh, ask the department to host to host us uh, in 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 their venue in Pretoria. Is it late? Next week, Wednesday, or Friday? Uh, or, or Friday for that matter. Chair, we would need to seek the approval of the office of the house chair, uh, and there is a process that we need to follow in that regard. Yeah. Okay, colleagues, are you, let, let's say they come back and say to us, uh, or for whatever reason, Wednesday is busy. Uh, would you have any problem with us uh, simply moving the meeting to Friday and have it in up there in in Pretoria? In Pretoria, <clears throat> do you have a problem? Hey, with from my so from my side, I will do whatever is required uh, to do our job and to do it in the most responsible way. And even if that means compromises in that regard, yes, we can do that. Um, I, I, I can even go so far as to say that, you know, we can even, with, in, in the worst case scenario, postpone it until the first possible opportunity in the middle of January. Not, not, not February, not end of January, but even in the middle of January. So if that is the case, then even we can accommodate that. Uh, and Pretoria, no problem. We will do whatever is required for us to do a proper job. Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll be guided by the logistics, um, whether it's Friday on the 10th or, or we'll move it uh, to sometime in early in the new year. 
and uh, but it it's it's got to be in time for the new budget. Um, uh, correct, correct. Yeah, so so that we are away where we stand on these matters. Colleagues, correct. do you agree? All right. So you will be thank you so much. So you'll be advised uh, by me after uh, I've consulted the, the you know the the the, 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 the approval uh, the approving structures of Parliament. All right. All right, colleagues, thank you. Thank you very much. I wanted us to deal with that one. Uh, Brian, let's quickly go through the minutes, the first set. All right. Uh, so this the meeting of the 24th of uh, November. All right. Attendance. We're transacting those issues. Um, right. Uh, that's attendance. All right. Right. Okay. Uh, so that was the, the first item. It's a briefing by NDOD. On the funding on the exit mechanism and the additional border safeguarding the funding of an exit exit mechanism and other measures to contain DOD COE expenditure and two the funding of additional border safeguarding initiative and three alternative funding models to keep the SMTF afloat. Right? Any correction there? Four point one, four point two. Any correction? Four point three. Any correction? Deliberations on five. All right. Any correct? Then six was the briefing by the inspector, uh, by DOD, on all on all cases of irregular expenditure. Uh, Jefferson, okay. just, just for interesting sake, in that previous minutes, my apologies. Uh, if I have read correctly, um, they have said about the funding model that they can do that early next year. Uh, where was the, I read it now? Um, yeah. Somewhere I've just read it. You went so quickly over it by the about the funding model, where they said they can do that early next year. So so maybe so hey, maybe early, yeah. So maybe January is then a, a good time for that. Uh, all right. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so so I'm suggesting January. Yeah. But that's yeah. what they are proposing. That's what they are pro are the minutes wrong? The minutes are not that is what they were proposing last week, yeah. Chair, when yeah. when, when yeah. they requested that we defer that part of the presentation. Yeah. yeah. So let's leave the minutes uh, uh, like this. Yeah. Just because that's what yeah, they the minutes is correct. The minutes is, is correct, sir. All right, sure. Thanks, Mr. All right, there's liberations of tier five, and then we go to six. Okay. Uh, so that was a briefing on all cases of irregular expenditure. And uh, we now have a, a further report on, on that. All right, that, okay. So those was deliberations, and then there was input by the deputy minister, uh, all right. And uh, then eight, we considered the uh, report, the, the BRRR report, and adopted it. So we resolved, and that is it. Colleagues, uh, can I take the record, the red meeting? The, 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 this is a record, a true reflection? Yes, uh, from my Ooh. side. Uh, moved by Mr. Mare. Seconded by Mafania. Uh, seconded by Mr. Mafania. Uh, thank you very much, colleagues. The meeting, the minutes are adopted. The last set, uh, Brian. So meeting of the 17th of November, uh, what we're dealing there with, it was a briefing uh, by DOD in its annual report, briefing by AMSCO in its annual report, and we considered and adopted the minutes, okay? Uh, run through, Brian. Second page. Any correction? Third page. 
on the correction. Fourth page. Any correction? Zoom dial. Uh, last page. Go to the last page. Go, go to the next page, Brian. Yes, right. And uh, okay. Next page, Brian. Is it I'm not? And, uh, and another page, uh, Mr. Mafani has forgotten to switch off his uh, audio. And uh, the ninth page. Sorry for that. Okay, sir. And then the last page. Uh, Chairperson, on the last page, just help me quickly. Point eight. First point said committee resolved to recall the DMV to brief the committee on the progress of the presidential task team. This minutes doesn't deal with that. Uh, please assess me. Uh, I think that's probably because this is DOD and arms corps. Um, so I cannot see how the how that point on the uh, Department of Military Veterans slipped into that uh, into that point, the first one. The first matter group. came through Mr. Mare when we dealt with the minutes. When we're dealing with the, the minutes, Mr. Mare. Okay. When we're okay. dealing with the above minutes of the tenth and the first uh, check. Yeah. Okay. 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 Right. Okay. <clears throat> so can I get a mover? I can move, I move it. Okay. Mr. Ms. Bakers moves and then Mr. Mare seconds. Uh, thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, the minutes are now uh, adopted. And uh, Brian, are we not done? Yes, we are, Chair. Thanks, colleagues. Uh, thank you very, mu very much until we, we meet again. And thank you very much. Thanks. Thank we are meeting chair. again tomorrow uh, in another, uh, in the yeah. form of the Joint Student Committee. Colleagues, thank, thank you, you very chair. much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. DM and thank everyone you. else. In the department, uh, we appreciated your presence. Hi, Tabo Moot. Tabo Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Who know who will do a Tabo? Recording stopped. <laughs>